Hello Pisces and welcome to the new year. Here we are with our first, almost first, weekly reading for the new year. I think last week we touched on January. I am very excited to be starting this year with you. I'm so glad you're with me. And we are doing the weekly reading like we normally do. And today, Pisces, I am doing a three by two using my own deck, uh, the Silhouettes deck. So let's see how you kick off this year. Okay, Pisces, here is your three by two. I immediately see that there is someone from a past chapter, probably in a different place, um, with whom you've had a long-standing situation, and it continues to be tricky, but the good news, I think, is that there is the bird on the right side here. So it sounds like you'll be back in touch with this person, or there's gonna be an opportunity to sort of find out a little bit about them, or get in touch with them through one way or another. Now, I do think, Pisces, the situation is generally tricky. We have neutral cards here, and we have the tricky snake uh, at the top right here. And with the bird, it can sort of aggravate the bird a little bit, but what's interesting about these two cards is that they have an opposite energy. The snake is about silence, and the bird is about conversation. So we see them together here, which would I would take to suggest being cautious as you have that conversation, you know, being... Uh, not revealing everything, you know, being balanced in the communication. I don't necessarily see contradictions in Lenormand's cards because, you know, it's up to you how you want to combine them. So let's back up a little bit to these cards and dig out different possibilities from them for you, Pisces. So we have the man, lily, and snake. So it sounds like this could be someone you've known for a long time, someone important in your life. It can also point to someone who is in your professional life because the lily is about work and career. And the snake here can point to secrets and silence and also a tricky situation. In love relationships, Pisces, the snake tends to be associated with a third party or a love triangle. So it's possible that this person has an illicit affair with someone or possibly that there's an illicit affair between the two of you, Pisces. You know, these dynamics can go in different direction depending on, uh, on your specifics. But more generally, and I'm, I'm not really seeing a romantic um, undertone to these cards. I think it's more, there's a bit more distance here. We have distant cards, the idea of separation, if not coldness. So more generally, Pisces, for the top line, I think because of the snake on the other side of the lily, it just sounds like there's been a time apart or there's a wedge between the two of you here. And going forward with this is gonna require some caution and calm and discretion. Now, the bottom row, I have the indication of the deep past here through the mountain and tower, and then the communication card with the bird. So it sounds like there's been this long-standing situation or a time apart between the two of you, or it's someone you, know, you go back with uh, a while back. And with the bird here, there is the communication. So I do see contact in the cards, and I think this is a positive step forward, depending on what the dynamic was, but it sounds like there's been a wedge, and now there's potentially an opportunity to bring things closer together, or a step in that direction. The mountain with the man here can mean that he, this person is located in a different place, and the lily and tower also points to a past chapter, so a bit like what we see with the tower and mountain. So I feel these cards are kind of far, they're slow. I really feel there's a bit of a distance here. And uh, you know, it's like things were on hold or cold and not really moving. The snake and bird can sort of move things forward, certainly in contrast to these cards here. There's more stuff going on with the snake and bird than in these cards, to be honest, Pisces. Um, but the snake remains cautious and calm and discreet and tactful. And so when it comes to touching base with this person or being in touch with them in one way or another, um, it really asks for caution. You know, so be balanced in your communication. Don't overstress anything. Be calm and also give and take. So be a good listener as well. Now, the man, tower, and snake suggest that, you know, things were apart. Um, and we saw this through several combinations. It's really not just a diagonal. And then the mountain lily and bird can point to conversations about a life in a different place or a situation in a different place uh, because of the mountain and lily. 
So in this sense, Pisces, the, the cards are not very joyous, okay? They're not bright cards, but in the context of a relationship that was on hold for a while, you know, there is some progress. There is contact. Yes, you need to be careful with it. And there was a gap, but you know, with this contact, it's possible to start, uh, you know, reconnecting in this sense. Now, I have to say, Pisces, that the cards also apply in the context of your work and your career. Potentially some legal matters are at play. And when it comes to work, you could be negotiating a certain offer. I'm not seeing that you land this week on it, but I do see that with the snake and bird, it's possible to negotiate certain aspects or to start having the conversation. In the context of legal and administration, you could be working with someone here represented by the man to move things forward. The snake and bird can point to discretion or moving forward cautiously. Uh, there can be some things that you need to manage carefully. And in this sense, this man would help you with that. In general, Pisces, the cards are slower. They're careful. They're not very bright, but there is a bit of progress happening. Things don't close or land or complete this week, uh, but this is where we see, you know, the beginnings of it turning around from what was on hold, what was cold, what was apart. So these are my thoughts for you this week, Pisces. Let me know what you make of them, especially in the context of the almost the first week of the year. Uh, so take it slow, okay? No need to be pushy or trying to make things happen. Definitely not what the cards are, are suggesting. You know, take it easy, allow things to unfold, and also be aware, you know, keep your eyes open, your ears open, and your mouth closed, I have to say, for the most part. And I do think someone comes through to support, but it just takes a bit of time, you know, like you're, you're just starting um, to open up the, uh, the conversation and the channel. So again, let me know what you make of these cards, Pisces. Take it easy. Best of luck with it. Welcome to the new year. Let me know how it goes on. Until next time, thank you for watching and take good care of yourself. Hello Aquarius, welcome to your weekly reading, the first week of the year, almost. I think last week we touched a little bit on January. I've got uh, my Silhouettes deck here, my own deck, and we're doing a three by two. So let's see how you kick off the year this week and see what is in store for you. Okay Aquarius, these are some really bright cards that we're seeing for you. I really think relationships come into the picture. There can be some changes on the home front, but in general I think this is more about enjoying some good times at home or at someone's place and connecting uh, with some people. It looks like the closer kinds of people in your life are in focus because we have both the home and the ring. Uh, but we also have the mountain which can point to contacts that you have in a different location. I think it still be close to you, you know, family, family, friends and people like that. And we have the beautiful star and moon that bring wonderful connections for you. Uh, so it's looking like a bright and festive week. Possibly you're continuing on the celebrations, uh, Aquarius, but it also is engaging and supportive and you could even land uh, on some goals or achieve something important for you. So the moon between uh, the uh, house and uh, mountain. So it's possible that we're looking at a place in a different location, maybe a bit farther from where you are. And with the moon here, there is an invitation. So it sounds like right from the get go that there's a get together or you're invited to go somewhere or possibly you're entertaining. In the bottom row, we have the stork and the ring and star. So these are wonderful activities with people who are close to you. Uh, you could also achieve a goal, land a wish, and uh, in another sense, Aquarius, the ring being about your activity, the, the, typically the routine kind of ongoing activity with the stork here, uh, it can mean that you are really happy pursuing your thing. Uh, you know, so it sounds like you're really in the zone this week and uh, things are happy. Now the house and stork is Aquarius typically the combination of house moves. Now, of course, this isn't as frequent as uh, it would be to deserve just a two pair, but it is classically that. Now, if you're not moving homes, um, you know, you could be looking at changes or activities, renovations and things like that. But if you are moving homes, then the mountain can point to a place abroad and with the moon here, it can open up this lifestyle for you. And maybe you're just traveling Aquarius, maybe you're just going someplace. Uh, in all cases, 
is it certainly brings uh, some activity and um, you know like there's a lot of energy and things going on on the home front or within this place the moon and ring is another suggestion for an invitation and uh, it is by itself pretty neutral uh, but because of the other cards around it with the star uh, you know it points to a lovely invitation and probably one that you accept and the mountain and star is a lovely card combination for wish fulfillment and achievement you could reach the top for example we could read the combination uh, metaphorically like that but in terms of spaces and places and going to the to these places the star certainly points to wonderful times in that location um, and uh, I do see with the house ring and mountain something similar to the house moon and mountain where you have a connection with people abroad probably closer to you and uh, it's definitely an opportunity to reconnect and then the stork moon and star is another suggestion for an invitation because of the stork it has that energy of you know let's you know let's go let's do something and with the star it's very positive so really Aquarius, any way you look at these cards, this is a, a week for you to have a good time. Connections with others are highlighted, especially closer people, whether they are near you or physically farther away from you. It is definitely an opportunity to connect with them. You could be inviting or receiving invitations and it sounds like either way they go really well. Now if you feel that these cards could be affecting another area of your life, not home, family and friends, it can point to your work maybe your home business your team and in this sense things go well as well um, there is a lot of uh, bonding there's a lot of connection between people uh, teamwork goes well success is at hand uh, it is really um, an abundant energy and a happy energy that we're seeing for you this week so Aquarius let me know how you like these ideas let me know whether that was closer to home or at work for you let me know who these contacts were abroad and if you enjoyed uh, maybe a visit or them visiting it'd be nice to know so best of luck with this first week of the year Aquarius let me know how it goes until next time thank you for watching and take good care of yourself hello Capricorn welcome to your weekly reading the first week of the new year and we did touch on January a little bit in the previous weekly reading, but this is um, this week is more focused on January, more fully, less December. So Capricorn, welcome. Let us tune into what's ahead for you this week. I've got my own deck, the Silhouette deck, and we're doing a simple three by two, one of my go-to layouts for the weekly reading. How exciting. Let's see how you kick off this year. Okay, Capricorn, here is your three by two. I'm picking up a neutral energy and I have to say it's the it's sort of the case for most of us it sounds like um, it sounds like we're just you know we're, we're just past the holidays and sort of you know calming down and so I'm seeing a more or less neutral energy across the cards for your part Capricorn I'm seeing news and travel and a connection here that comes into play uh, the bird and book suggests that something is revealed or perhaps you do a bit of research into something and the ship and tree can point to a trip and the man and child can point to uh, a new relationship here uh, the cards are slower uh, it sounds like things are still in process to pick up and i have to say this too is an energy that i'm seeing across a few signs um, with the rose we have similar ideas coming through we have the ship and bird together and these can highlight travel again and we have the man so it's either that this man helps you with your trip or perhaps it is someone you go see or he's the one who travels um, there is a, a person who comes into the picture for your trips now if it's not about traveling for you it would be about venturing out and exploring options again i'm not seeing that there is like an aggressive move forward or a lot of action forward at capricorn it sounds like the things are you know kicking off or in the works uh, you know we're still in the transition in the process kind of phase so neutral energy in the bottom row we have the book and tree and the child 
Now this is actually quite a bright combination. Um, the book and tree would normally point to knowledge and education and uh, with the tree it, it, there is that sense of growth and with the child there is also this idea of you know sowing new seeds and uh, you know working towards um, blooming into something. So this can be a bit of a personal development, uh, inner journey kind of combination, uh, Capricorn, and it can apply in parallel to what we're seeing in the top row. Uh, but in alignment with the top row, there is, like I felt, um, a new beginning that is in the making, a transition into something new, or is this venture here uh, that is represented by the ship. And the thing about the book is that it points to things that are unknown, unknown factors. You could be researching or digging into certain areas or looking into things. And uh, so it, it's like things are still in process. And uh, there can be this person who comes into the picture to help you with this. So a bit of a slower energy Capricorn as you move into uh, some kind of venture or into a new beginning as you explore options and also as you tune into yourself and your growth and uh, you know where you're heading in the coming phase. Now the bird tree and man is again bringing into the picture this person. I do think a conversation is at play and when we look at the book and man as corner cards it sounds like it's someone you don't really know yet and with the bird and child it can be a new beginning. So again we're seeing these early steps in a venture for you Capricorn. You could be exploring options or uh, making this um, making a connection with this person and looking at your options for travel or for learning or you know other goals that you could be after. But again, I feel things are still early, uh, just you know, as we are in the beginning of the year and not really a lot of activity or forward movement. The book ship and child is another suggestion that you're moving into a new chapter quite literally with the child and book and with the ship it sounds like you know it's a new direction. I do think travel can apply for some of you uh, Capricorns and if that's the case it's sort of like you're planning it or you're getting closer to it or you know you could be taking some uh, beginning steps towards uh, this trip or this venture. So overall Capricorn, a bit of a neutral energy here. This is more about exploring options and getting some questions answered. Maybe getting to know a person who could help you with your goals and also going within to figure out what you want to do or you know what you want to learn in the coming phase. So again, I'm not seeing these strong forward movement uh, ac actions. It's more like a transitionary kind of situation information collection, you know, gathering what you need and figuring things out. All the while the energy is calm and quiet and easygoing. And like I said, Capricorn, it sounds like we're still like like we're still coming out of the holidays. We're not seeing, you know, these strong forward steps. And I'm seeing this consistently across the signs so far. So let me know what you're planning, uh, Capricorn. Is this a trip or some other venture? Let me know who this person turns out to be. And also how you feel if you're sort of able to connect with a perspective that helps you take a bit of a broader view on the coming chapter of your life. I'd be interested to know. So best of luck with the week, with this first week. Let me know how it goes. As always, thank you for watching. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Hello Sagittarius, welcome to your weekly reading and here we are in the first week of January. Uh, we did touch on January in the last weekly reading but this time it's more fully focused on January. So I've got my own silhouettes deck and we're doing a 3 by 2 Let's see what it looks like for you. I have to say so far it's been looking calm and quiet. It sounds like, you know, we're still in that zone where we're coming out of the end of the year, out of the holidays and sort of just settling into the new year. So let's see if it's the same energy for you Sagittarius and what is ahead for you. Okay, some interesting cards Sagittarius. We definitely have the people element coming into the picture. The man, the house, the dog. These are three cards related to people and family and friends. Uh, likely people who are closer to you because of the house. We do have the mouse that is a little bit tricky. It can point to little issues with people, a bit of a doubt here or 
a small issue with regards to trust. Uh, but also, Sagittarius, we have the star. And the star is an all-around healing card. It is also stronger than the mouse, so it's very likely that the issue can be overcome. Um, I have a feeling that because the star is like your first card here, and it's not normally something I pay attention to in a small spread like a three by two. Normally the first card, you know, you look at it in the portrait and the tableaus, you know, this is a bit small, but still, I feel that it sort of speaks in your three by two here as Sagittarius. And I feel that you need to have, you know, a hopeful attitude, an optimistic attitude, a generous and kind attitude with the um, people in your life and with the possible issues happening uh, with another person or you know possibly between two other people and also with the star such as in the combination with the mouse there's a very good chance that things can be resolved and like i said the mouse is smaller than the star so the star easily overcomes it the other corner cards is the man and dog represents a friend um, or someone close to home, like a sibling, a cousin, typically someone within your peer group. So again, this idea of relationships coming into the picture. Now I have to say, Sagittarius, that the cards are sort of calm and quiet. There is the house, you know, with the star and dog. So, you know, there's positive energy at home. You could still be hanging out with your family, your friends, you know, over the holidays or the vacation. And things are chill, you know, things are okay. There's no issues here. The star can bring a powerful energy of wish fulfillment and in this sense, uh, you know, there can be some very positive energies or um, domestic uh, wishes being fulfilled uh, because of the star. The bottom row is a bit trickier because we have the mouse with the man and road. So there can be some differences that arise you know when people go their separate ways because of the road and mouse and i'm not seeing like a radical parting in this sense but you know sort of like on the way or in relation to that in a in a smaller scale in a softer way the man with the road and mouse can mean that you know people are not on the same page about everything that there are a few differences that come up and this also comes through with the dog and mouse because it's very similar to the man and mouse so a bit of an issue that comes up with people Sagittarius again I'm not saying it's a huge deal but it's probably what you know it takes some um, takes the focus of the week uh, the star and man is lovely for a very supportive person, uh, unlike the dog and mouse, which is not as lovely, you know, at this point to, like we said, the issues uh, between people. And the house and road can point to changes, but again, I feel that because of the people element here, it's more of a, a bit of a separation of sorts where people are not 100% on the same page. Now, the diagonals are bright. The star, road, and dog is bright. It's a bit like with the star and dog. And then in the other one, we've got the mouse with the man and the house between them. So again, these issues that come up um, at the home front or within a group of people with your friends and family. So really, any way we combine the cards, they're sort of telling us the same thing. Um, there is a generally positive energy with people in your life right now, Sagittarius, but there could be an issue that comes up. But again, I feel this is easily resolved. And also your attitude matters, having uh, like um, a higher kind of attitude, a more magnanimous attitude towards it, it's gonna help downplay the issues. And I think things are fine moving forward. I do think this is more on the personal front, probably because it makes sense of where we are in the year, but it can apply in other contexts of your life, Sagittarius, such as at work or with customers, with your business, you know, or other people who help you do things in your life. There can be a bit of an issue here, and I think the goal is to see how it is resolved because it will be resolved. So a sort of straightforward and calm energy, like I said, Sagittarius, it seems to be the case for all of us. Um, we are, there's a bit of a slow, a slowing down factor right now. Things are not moving very fast. We're not seeing, you know, these ambitious cards or these big activity cards or these big decision cards. You know, it's sort of small and, and close to home and calm. So stick with this energy, Sagittarius, let it go. Uh, you know, take it easy and get along with others. And there's no need to, um, to 
exaggerate anything. I think the opposite is true for you. I think if you can just downsize something and downplay something, it's going to be better for the peace and for the relationships. So let me know what you make of these cards, Sagittarius. Let me know if you're hanging out at home and these are your friends, your family, or it's another area of your life. What was the, the difference that sort of came up, you know, and how you resolved it and how you're feeling, you know, your attitude towards this? I'd be interested to know as always. So thank you for tuning in Sagittarius. Until next time, as always, take very good care of yourself. Hello Scorpio, welcome to your weekly reading. This is the first week of 2023 in January and we did touch a little bit on January last week but this is the more complete completely focused uh, reading on the first week of January. So welcome to this new year, Scorpio. Let us get into your cards. I have uh, my own deck here, the Silhouettes deck, and we're doing a three by two, one of my go-to spreads for the weekly reading. It's been a bit quiet, I have to say. The energies are tending towards neutral. It must be that we're still picking up from the holidays and also we're entering the retrograde and we're still in that that transition, I think. So let's go ahead and see how it plays out for you specifically, Scorpio. Okay, Scorpio, here is an interesting set of six cards, I have to say. The moon and sun is really good for a relationship typically a love relationship, but I have to say that the snake is going to change that a little bit. We also have the garden in the cards. And so I feel that the relationship aspect comes through for you. And we have a couple of travel cards. So it can be that there are meetings or get togethers or events that you go to and, uh, you know, so that you are part of some kind of social atmosphere here. And let's back up and weave the cards because I think that there's a couple of layers here that can come through. Let's look at the corner cards. The snake and sun is actually a really good combination. Even though the snake can be tricky, the sun is very good with clarity. So when it comes to being focused on your own goals and knowing what you want, these are really good cards, Scorpio. And also when it comes to tricky people, uh, as you know, the snake is tricky. Well, the sun is also really bright here because it helps you see through someone's intentions or you see what's going on here. The other corner cards, the stork and the mountain, are typically about travel. You could be going somewhere or someone could be coming, but it doesn't have to be travel as such. Instead, I feel that with the rest of the cards, it's really about, you know, going out, being out there, being with people and being active in this sense. And there is also a possibility, Scorpio, that because of the snake in the cards and also because the mountain can be an obstacle sometimes, I feel that here you're able to overcome an obstacle. I know the snake is not directly adjacent to the mountain, but if it were, it would typically point to the idea of getting around an obstacle, sometimes going around someone's back. And with the stork and mountain, there is this idea of overcoming and being able to break through. So if things were stuck, I think you're able to get more elbow room uh, this time around, Scorpio, but I also think that the snake brings that sense of caution. So it's not like an aggressive breakthrough or anything like that. It's like a, it's like a smooth getting around something. That is possible. Let's look at the rows here. We have the snake and moon and the mountain. Now, the snake and moon would probably caution you against an offer or an invitation. And the mountain being at the end of the line, like I said, it can be about blockages and things like that or obstacles. Well, in here, I feel that you might want to put something on hold until you have more clarity about what it is and also or alternatively Scorpio that you want to be aware that not everything is transparent and there can be some tricky characters or a tricky situation uh, in this environment or in this activity or situation. So just be aware of that. And also the snake is always good advice uh, when it comes to these tricky situations. It tells you to not say yes or no, but sort of take it away and think about it. You don't need to rush to commit to anything and make sure you keep your self-interest foremost in mind. Now the bottom row is 
a very positive combination of cards. The sun is one of the brightest cards and with the garden here there there are some happy events. Uh, you, you're clearly it's about going out, going places and having a good time. So this is definitely encouraged for you Scorpio. Just being aware that there can be some characters you come across that are not you know 100%. The snake and stork, a bit like what I saw with the snake and mountain, it, it tends to this idea of taking like an indirect route. And I think this is what leads to success. I think it works well with the sun as well. So, so be a little bit indirect. Don't be too upfront. That could help. The moon and garden is typically an invitation. But again, I want to caution you against rushing too quickly into something because it T crosses the top row. And then finally, the mountain and sun here is a combination I typically read as suggesting a summer holiday. But of course, it's, we're not looking at a summer holiday here. We're in the dead of winter, in fact. Um, well, for most of us, I have to say. Um, but um, the idea is that idea of fun. So like we're seeing in the bottom row, it's definitely a good time, Scorpio, to go out and be with people, enjoy some good times, go to events, go to places, mix and mingle and things like that. It's just that as you go about this, as you're out there with people, uh, just uh, you know, be indirect with some characters at least or in general, and also be aware that not everyone is on the same page as you and there could be things going on behind the scenes that is not what it seems and that that's really all the snake garden and mountain can highlight this even further because the snake and garden tends to suggest the idea of a snake in the grass so again you know be cautious about your pe the people around you you know the c things you say and things like that and i think with the mountain it's a good idea to have a sense of boundary here you know, so no need to get too personal with some characters, just keeping it light. And then the stork, moon and sun would actually be a really good combination for love and relationships. Like I said at the outset, you could be dating, you could be going out to meet people, you could meet someone. Um, so that would be a really good combination for something like that. Now, a couple of scenarios here with the snake. So the snake can suggest that you take it easy as you get to know this person. And also, alternatively, that you sort of hold off until you know better because some things are maybe not what they seem to be at this stage. So again, this idea of going slowly and indirectly, not being too upfront about everything, sounds like a good strategy at this time, Scorpio. But this doesn't mean that you shouldn't have fun, that you shouldn't go out there and enjoy some good times. So definitely a good week to be social while also taking it easy and taking your time getting to know someone or some people. I, I think it tends to be more social, more personal, but it can apply in another area of your life, like in a professional networking environment and things like that. But you let me know, Scorpio, the dynamics are the same regardless. Uh, very best of luck with the week. Let me know how it plays out. Let me know how you like these ideas. And until next time, thank you for watching and take very good care of yourself. Hello Libra, welcome to your weekly reading. This is the first week of the year, January. We did touch on January a little bit in the last weekly reading, uh, but this one is more fully focused on January. Uh, the energies have been slower. I think it's about you know coming out of the holidays and also the retrograde. Uh, so the, the cards have been neutral generally, but let's see what is ahead for you specifically Libra. I've got my own deck here and we're doing a three by two one of my go-to spreads for a weekly reading. So let's see what's in store for you. Okay, Libra, here is a lovely set of cards. I'm seeing the idea of staying home. You could be receiving people at home and honestly, you're not alone with this. Um, a few of us across the signs have this idea of just chilling and you know, hanging out either at home or with people. I'm not seeing aggressive changes, aggressive new beginnings. Like I said, we're still coming out of the holiday and getting into the retrograde. So the, the cards are generally uh, calm and neutral. 
for your part Libra there are some uh, lovely energies here mainly coming through the flowers uh, the house and anchor has to do with staying home and with the flowers you could be uh, enjoying a party at home or entertaining at home or maybe it's someone else's home but definitely the idea of you know staying with your closer circle of people and enjoying these celebrations is definitely advised now the uh, top row has a bit of a different energy we have the mountain and tower this typically points to the deep past and then we have the rider which can point to news or a visitor i think in light of the cards here you could be reconnecting with um, connections that you've known a long time. You could be looking at reconnecting with family, you know, people who are uh, like closer to you, whom you've known a long time. And with the rider, there can be visits or contact. And it's all exciting, I think. Um, the idea is really to come close and, and to, to be with people and with the, that closer circle. The mountain and uh, flowers actually works well with the top row it has to do with the idea of return so this can be a time when there is a reunion very literally and uh, it's a very bright combination so it can be a happy time when you're able to reconnect with some people and the tower and house would also point to a place from the past uh, maybe your family your home your roots uh, these are coming into the picture and the rider and anchor points to an arrival or people coming, arriving. So again, really all of these cards, uh, I mean, all of the different combination of these cards are suggesting the same idea that it's a good time to be with people, to reconnect with loved ones and people who are more, more deeply part of your life, whether it's family or long, long term friendships and people like that. There is a sense of reunion and happy reunions and possibly after a long time apart. Uh, so that too is uh, quite wonderful. And there is this idea of staying home and, you know, keeping it close to home. So again, like I said, Libra, I'm seeing this almost across the board. There's like a quieter, more inner kind of energy, just spending time with that inner circle for many of us. Now, I, I feel this is more personal more about your relationships, home and family. But in case we're talking about work, uh, for example, Libra, then the cards could be really good. You could get news that might have been on hold. You could be meeting with someone uh, of influence, possibly a manager or some other kind of uh, person with uh, some influence on your, on your work situation. And the writer and anchor would suggest some really positive outcomes here, especially as you look at the anchor across uh, the different combinations. So in another context, these cards are also quite supportive. Now the flowers, tower and anchor is another combination that points to something that comes back from the past and uh, with the anchor there is like a, a strong kind of bond or reconnection that is possible and with the mountain house and rider this can be a place in a different location and again i'm seeing this idea of a visitor people coming to you or you going to them uh, you know to reconnect so these are uh, these are very clearly pointing in the same direction, Libra. This is a reunion, getting together with people, probably people from a different place or um, from the past or, uh, you know, people who are more closely connected to you. It's definitely a good time to spend it with them. So stick around, you know, keep it close, keep it intimate and enjoy the good times and take it easy and i have to say libra this is pretty consistent across most of the signs you know sort of kicking back a little bit keeping it slow for the time being so let me know if you are with friends and family libra let me know how these festivities are going let me know how you're feeling this whole change into the new year i'd be interested to know best of luck with the week ahead as always until next time thank you for tuning in and take very good care of yourself Hello Virgo, welcome to your weekly reading. Here we are in the first week of January, although we touched a little bit on January last week, uh, but this week is more fully dedicated to January. And uh, so here we are in the new year, uh, Virgo, and uh, I have to say that the energies of the cards have been largely neutral and calm. I think uh, it's about still 
coming out of the holidays and also the retrograde. So a bit of a slow uh, phase, but let's go ahead and draw your cards and see what specifically we get for you, Virgo. I've got uh, my own deck here, the Silhouettes deck, and we're doing a three by two. Uh, one of my favorite uh, and go-to spreads for the weekly reading. So let's see what is in store for you. Okay, Virgo, here is your set of cards. I have to say that they're a bit uh, sharper considering what I've mentioned about the rest of us or most of us. Uh, you have a very clear ending in the cards and it seems to be in relation to a relationship. Uh, so these are potentially pretty sharp cards, Virgo. And uh, I think with this combination that sort of stands out a little bit, I feel that it's best leaving it as it as it stands as it ends and uh, this really is part of this uh, winding down energy that I'm seeing I mean it's quiet and calm for most of us you have some pretty sharp cards but there is a sense of um, you know things not really starting yet uh, we're not really moving aggressively into a new beginning or anything like that there is a winding down and a calm energy throughout for your part, uh, Virgo, we're seeing a sharp ending in a relationship and um, it's best that you leave it at that. So let's go ahead and weave these cards. The uh, corner cards, Woman and Cross, this suggests an important uh, relationship, but also the uh, cross suggests that you might need to make a decision about someone. And the scythe and coffin is pretty final in terms of an ending. So it's pretty clear to me that you're going to decide to remove yourself from this relationship. I do think it's personal, like it's a personal relationship, um, but it can also be another connection. It could be someone at work, a customer, a partner, you know, some person you work with or you hire uh, for for something or uh, for something that you you need. And uh, it looks like. Um, you're going to release this person at this point. The woman ring and coffin is clearly the end of a relationship. And also it could be the end of a commitment in this relationship. So maybe you were working for this person or you were doing something for her or she was doing something for you, you know, and at this point you release yourself from it, you end it and you move on. The um, bottom row is a bit more challenging like the top row could be neutral but with the bottom row it's a bit heavier we have the clouds and cross they can bring tension and a bit of burden here um, but the scythe can be so in addition to being that break off and that separation it's like telling you that you want to stop hesitating and stop wondering and stop thinking about this you could be at a stage where you're just overthinking this and the change needs to happen. So you want to break out of this sort of muddled thinking, this cloudiness in your mind, if that's what you're experiencing, Virgo, and you want to just release yourself from it. So actually that could be a really good time for it. The woman and scythe is um, typically a, a separation, but I also think that there could be a shock or something she says or does or something happens between the two of you and it's like uh, you know it was unexpected and that could contribute a little bit to the um, to this thinking uh, that is confused that we're seeing through the bottom row maybe you didn't expect this from this person or you didn't expect for things to happen in this way so now you're thinking about you know whether you're going to continue in this relationship and the answer is probably not um so with the ring and clouds you know you're wondering about well how does it continue moving forward and then the coffin and cross is clearly you know about letting it go and you know you really coming to the conclusion that it's not it's not workable anymore and it's not probably not worth it anymore and uh, you want to move on from it the diagonals also support this so really any way we combine these cards they're pretty loud and clear we have the woman um, uh, clouds and coffin a bit like the ring and coffin there's an ending and the scythe ring and cross is a pretty final combination in terms of a divorce a bit like the scythe and coffin which is about an ending so really any way you combine these cards Virgo they really point to an ending and a separation from this person and um, it's possible that you need to think a little bit about this but uh, uh, it's also a suggestion here not to not to dwell on this too much and to sort of make a decision and move on. 
Like I said, I think it's personal. It's a personal connection, but it might be in another context, really. It's just my feeling. Um, so you let me know if you are uh, making a decision about someone or your involvement with someone and moving on to something else. Um, I also want to suggest, Virgo, that once you do make this change, you know, let it go. It's okay. There's no need to, um, as they say, belabor the point. You know what I mean? So let it go. And this is a good time to make a sharp change in this regard. I'd be really interested to know your feedback, Virgo. Is there such a change that you resonate with? Is it a person that you need to let go of? Uh, is there like a separation that manifests in a different way for you? I'd love your feedback. Best of luck with this transition. And uh, until next time, take very good care of yourself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Hello, Leo. Welcome to your weekly reading. Here we are in January, the first week of January. And we touched a little bit on January in the last weekly reading, but this week is more fully dedicated to uh, the first week of the year. I have to say that so far the energies have been calm and quiet. There weren't many signs with something big happening, if I can put it that way. So it sounds like we're still like coming out of the holidays and you know, there's the retrograde. So I'm feeling a, a generally slow, a slower energy. But let's draw your cards, Leo, and see what it looks like for you. Okay, Leo, here is a very interesting set of cards. Uh, admittedly, it's a bit louder than most other signs because of the whip. And clearly this brings into the picture a relationship. Uh, we do have the beautiful uh, moon and star at the end here. And these are wish fulfillment cards. Uh, they bring happiness and hope. So you could actually land on a wish or achieve something that you want, uh, despite the challenging aspects of the whip. So it's gonna be interesting. Let's weave these cards together because as it stands, it looks like it's a bit mixed up or it's a mixed bag. But actually, when we weave the combinations, the story unfolds. So the ring and star, is a wonderful relationship. Whereas the whip and moon is turning something down or an obstacle or a challenge. So it sounds to me, Leo, and I think this is gonna be clear when we look at the book, that there is an opportunity here. Um, and so you're gonna make a decision. You're gonna let something go in favor of a new offer. The ring, book and moon is a very straightforward combination that suggests a proposal, an invitation, uh, or some kind of offer that comes your way. The ring and book is one of them, and the book and moon is similarly. They're, they're like synonyms, if you like. So they mean the same thing. So we have them twice, uh, which emphasizes this idea of an offer or an invitation. The bottom row, very curious. On the one hand, we have the whip, and on the other hand, we have the star. So it's possible that there is some kind of conflict that comes up with this person, uh, but then there is uh, a healing. The star is a card of healing, and so it's very likely that whatever was the issue with this person, it is positively resolved. Now, I think that um, there is more going on because we have uh, the ring and whip. And so the ring and whip is getting out of something, getting out of a a relationship or an involvement and this ties into what I felt was going on with the moon so I feel something comes your way and you're able to break away from a circumstance in order to uh, embrace the new one we have the book and man here so a couple of possibilities Leo it could be someone you don't yet know or it can be the person who brings the offer, or actually both. Um, so clearly this relationship comes into the picture and this person is connected with the opportunity, the invitation, or the offer. The moon and star is lovely. This is a wish fulfillment combination. So it's clear that what comes through is what you want and so you're able to make a change and let go of this circumstance here. The ring, man, and moon, again, I feel this person makes the offer. Um, so the, the moon can point to appreciation, of course, the invitation, and the ring and man can point to a relationship. And then the whip, book, and star is a revelation 
or something that opens up, maybe unexpectedly, or maybe it shakes you up a little bit. Uh, but then on the other side of it, there is definitely some wishes materializing here. Now I have to say, Leo, that the cards are great for a personal relationship and they're also great for another area of your life, like a work offer or some other kinds of offer that come your way. In a personal relationship, there can be a change in relationships. You could be at a juncture where you make a choice or it can be that you've experienced a past issue and now you turn the page into a new relationship. It is possible. Um, in terms of an offer, I, like I said, an offer comes your way and this enables you to make a change and to release yourself from the current circumstance and embrace this one. Um, any way you look at these cards, I really feel, Leo, that this is a time where you could be feeling blessed. You know, despite the, the challenging aspects of the whip, and I'm not feeling that the whip is really heavy handed in your cards. Um, I, I think with the moon and star and the ring, you know, this offer, it's like a blessing is coming to you, like there's an opening for you. And um, I think you're going to happily embrace it and you'll be easily able to release you know what you're doing right now or something that you're involved in right now and if there's a challenge you also you overcome that so they're really lovely cards for a developing relationship for a deepening relationship or for an offer in some area of your life i'd be really interested to hear your thoughts leo let me know your feedback about this let me know who this person was i'd be curious if you're willing to share very best of luck with this first week and let me know how it goes again. Until next time, as always, thank you for watching and take very good care of yourself. Hello Cancer, welcome to your weekly reading. I am doing a three by two today with my own deck, the Silhouettes deck. And um, we are in the first week of January, although I touched a little bit on January in the last weekly reading. And uh, Cancer, the energies have been more or less calm and quiet, although there's been a couple of signs so far that have sharper energies coming through for this time of year. So we're still coming out of the holidays and we're entering retrograde. Um, so I think we're you know, in, in a bit of a transition right now. Let's see what we get specifically for you, Cancer. Okay, Cancer, these are some interesting cards. The social element comes through very clearly. In the top row, we have the house, the dog, and the man. So you could have friends over, visitors, siblings. It can also be colleagues in the context of work. So clearly a focus on people and the social aspect. The house can mean that you are entertaining at home or spending time at home or with people who are closer to home. And I have to say, Cancer, this has been pretty consistent across many signs. We're still at home with family and friends, you know, over the holidays, and we're enjoying these good times. When I look at the house and clover for you, uh, it's lovely. This is a very lucky combination for anything happening in the home uh, or with your family or with your family friends. Uh, so very good times at home. The other set is, in, uh, in focus with a person and the story can suggest some changes or something that happens. Uh, what's curious is the bottom row. We have the whip and the whip is typically a pretty challenging card. In fact, the most challenging card of the deck. So with the stork and whip, there's definitely something that is um, sort of cracked open, something that is pushed into action if you like, or something happens that causes a conflict and a disagreement. But what's really interesting is the clover on the other side of this. So the clover, it's kind of strong. I mean, the whip is very strong and the clover is pretty good too. Um, but I often read this kind of combination, the clover with a very challenging card, as a blessing in disguise. And so what turns out to happen with something like this is that despite the challenge, there's actually a good reason for it to happen. And actually it does come with a benefit. So you're able to take advantage of a challenge or a conflict in order to get something good out of it. Um, and I know this is not often that it happens, but it can happen sometimes. And we're seeing it for you here, Cancer. And it's probably in light of this relationship. So the house and stork 
is classically the combination of moves and changes, but I don't think this is what's happening here. Instead, I think there could be a lot of activity at home. You could be receiving people, um, going to people, going to events. You know, there's, uh, there's celebrations and festivities around this time, so you're probably gonna be busy. The dog and whip is the conflict combination here. It really highlights the idea that there is a quarrel or a disagreement with someone, uh, but the man and clover is definitely very lucky and it points to a resolution. Now, I can't really tell from your specific individual scenario, Cancer, if the dog and man are different people. It happens. There is a, a situation with someone and another one with another person, or they can represent the same person. It's gonna depend on your specifics. Uh, but regardless, the dynamic is that an issue is resolved. And not only that, but that this issue is actually a blessing in disguise it can be taken advantage of. And so it can be pretty lucky that this issue happened because it opens up into something that perhaps you didn't expect that you're able to take advantage of. The house whip and man, well, it's similar to the whip and dog, you know, because it's the relationship aspect and also with the house. So again, there is this idea of a conflict between someone, between you and someone else or between people within this home, this environment. But again, the stork, dog, and clover, like the man and clover, it resolves, you know, and it resolves in a way that perhaps was unexpected, and there's a benefit to be taken advantage of. So overall, Cancer, the week is focused on people, again, you know, friends, family, staying home, enjoying the holidays and things like that. And there is a conflict or a problem that comes up, but on the back of it, there is something pretty advantageous that comes through, so that is pretty lucky. And so I would say suggest cancer that you focus on a solution and that you keep an open mind because the way things fall into place might not be uh, what you expected so again cancer good times with friends family possibly colleagues you know enjoying uh, your closer circle of people here uh, going through this conflict or this issue whatever it may be specifically for you but it turns uh, to an advantage so quite a lucky turn of events i would say for you this week cancer let me know how it plays out I'm looking forward to your thoughts and your feedback, who these people were, what the issue was, if you're willing to share. As always, thank you for tuning in, Cancer, and until next time, thank you for watching and take good care of yourself. Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your weekly reading. I am doing a three by two today, and I've got my own deck, the Silhouettes deck, and we are in the first week of January. We touched a little bit on January in last week's reading, but this week is more uh, fully focused on January. And the energies have been quiet. I think we're still in the holiday season, the transition into the new year, and also the retrograde. So it's been uh, generally neutral across most signs, uh, Gemini. Let's uh, draw your cards and see what it's like for you. Okay, Gemini, some interesting cards. Obviously, the news and communication element is uh, in focus for you. We have both the letter and the writer. And we also have the stork, which can suggest a green light or you know, being able to take an action now that you get the news. We also have the coffin. You're not alone with this, Gemini. There are some endings. It's like um, some of us are still winding down and closing things off. And I'm seeing this for you as well, which by the way, I think is pretty positive. Uh, the clouds can be a bit challenging. It can cause a bit of confusion, a bit of doubt and hesitation, maybe not having uh, total clarity. And I think this is gonna be in relation to, to the news here. Maybe not everything about it is clear um, in order for you to take an action, but actually it sounds like an action is better than none. So let's get into the details and build this three by two. The letter in coffin, interesting. So because of the stork, which sets things into motion and specifically with the coffin, it points to something that was on hold that finally comes through. It sounds like it's the, the news or the feedback or the message that was on hold. It's also possible, Gemini, that the letter is about paperwork and documents and applications and things like that. So it sounds like these were on hold, but they are going to move forward. We have the tree and stork in the other set of corner cards. 
This is a great combination for promotions normally, the idea of being able to move up, um, but certainly if things were on hold, you have an opportunity to move forward and pick things up again. Now in general, the energy of the cards is slower, uh, that's consistent with uh, the readings overall, and we're seeing this uh, for you as well, Gemini. Despite the stork and rider, we still have, you know, the tree, coffin, the clouds, they're slower cards. But things are now able to move forward because you get the news, it helps you take that step forward. Now the letter clouds and stork. I really think here, Gemini, that not everything is clear about the news. It sounds like you still have some questions or some question marks. Maybe it causes confusion where there wasn't any. And so you need to sort that out. And with the stork here, it's definitely a good idea to be proactive about this and to figure uh, things out. So yes, there is the, the news, the feedback that finally comes through, uh, but still it's not, you know, it's not clean 100%, you need to work through it. And I think that's fine. I mean, with the stork, you're able to, to move past the doubts. Now, the bottom row is very interesting. We have the tree rider and the coffin. It sounds like you are at the end of a road, Gemini. It sounds like you've achieved a goal. I know the coffin is typically not very bright. It's typically challenging, but it is the card of endings. And some endings are actually completions and achievements. And with two lovely cards, like the tree and rider, it sounds like you've achieved your goal. You know, you've, um, you've grown in it as much as you aimed for or as much as you could. And now you're ready to move on and bring it to a close. So it's likely that the news that comes through Gemini helps you uh, wrap something up, you know, close something off. It's definitely a good time for this. If you can, um, uh, you know, push it forward, push it to a completion, the cards are encouraging. The letter and tree, again, taking a bit of time here for the news to come. It's not as slow as the coffin, but it takes a bit of time as well. But what's also nice about these cards is that when the news comes, it really um, sets the foundation for something positive to come through. The clouds and rider, again, this idea of figuring your way or figuring the issues that come through or the the lack of clarity that could be coming through with the letter. It's a bit like with the stork, both the rider and stork are active cards. So you need to sort of, you know, you need to sort of move past the confusion, like understand what's going on and, and move past it. And then the stork and coffin is very good for setting things into motion and also bringing things to a close. So a bit like with the rider and coffin, we have the stork and coffin. It can uh, suggest not only that things that were on hold can now move forward, but things can now be completed. So what I'm really seeing, Gemini, is that you're able to turn the page uh, this week. At least you're able to begin heading in this direction. Um, you get the feedback, you get the news or the, the documents, communications or whatever it is in your specifics that helps you move forward and you're able to close something off and move on uh, in a new direction now. So there is a bit of a, a confusion element, but it's really not such a big deal. I don't think you're more focused on moving past this and bringing it to a close. And I think you're right about that. I mean, the cards really support you in, um, in uh, just closing this off and moving on from it. I can't really tell from these cards, Gemini, if this is about work, money, another area of your life. It seems to be administrative if I can put it that way I'm not really seeing relationships and you know personal cards so much so it can be something in your administration or something else in your life or possibly work but you let me know uh, Gemini I, I like uh, I'd like your feedback on this so a good time to wrap things up and close things off uh, pending this uh, communication here very best of luck with this, Gemini. Let me know how it plays out again. And until next time, as always, thank you for watching and take very good care of yourself. Hello, Taurus. Welcome to your weekly reading. I am doing a three by two today with my own deck, the Silhouettes deck. And Taurus, the energies have been pretty calm and chill this week. It sounds like we're still in transition coming out of the holidays and there's also the retrograde. There's just a few signs we really had some sharp 
changes or you know some more aggressive energies so let's see what is in store for you specifically Taurus and how it plays out for you this week okay Taurus these are some pretty interesting cards to get at this time of the year with the fish in the cards this can be a focus on your work your income your career and we do have louder cards uh, for you this week uh, quite louder than most other signs there are a few signs who have the whip and the scythe and cards like that and you're one of them so generally Taurus, we're seeing that you could be in for a change you could be in for a new beginning the uh, ring and fish really stand out to me on the right hand side of your three by two and it sounds like you are going to be in some kind of commitment here it could be a financial commitment it could be a new job a new project maybe a new customer depending on how you operate and when we look at the cards before these two we are seeing a pretty big change there is like a break off there is the conflict card there is the clouds next to the road. So it sounds like you're shaking up your direction a little bit, Taurus. And uh, the point of that is to land in this involvement that we see through the ring and fish. So let's weave these cards together and get into more details here. We have the road and fish as the corner cards. Uh, this is about your uh, income, your financial direction. It can also be a job or a project or a customer if you're in business for yourself. It sort of depends how you operate. Uh, but if, you're, if you don't work, for example, it is about your financial goals as well. So the fish really brings in this element. Now the fish can also be about relationships in um, combination with the ring, but let's, let's uh, look at that a bit later. The other two are the rider and ring. And so here again, this is about your goals and commitments, you know, pursuing um, certain goals, certain routines, uh, you know, the things that you are committed to. So these cards really bring into the picture your direction, your commitments, and this is what could be um, in question actually this week, Taurus. Now the uh, road clouds and ring is precisely about that. The clouds is a card of thinking and thoughts. It brings tension and confusion. And with the road here, as well as the ring, you could be rethinking um, certain aspects of your path, your commitments. The bottom row is a bit louder in this sense because we have the whip and the whip can bring conflict and challenges and we see it with the rider so this can be a change of direction it can be a certain upset or disappointment uh, or conflict that you have with some goals and the fish with the whip typically brings up expenses and things like that but i'm not really seeing that so much in these cards instead what I think could be happening or is more likely happening for you, Taurus, is that you are rethinking um, certain aspects of your financial well-being, your work, your career, your business. And uh, I think with the whip and clouds, there are some things that you're not happy with and you want to make a change. So you could... Uh, break off certain commitments, you could shake up certain uh, aspects of it, you could change direction a little bit or, or a lot. It's like there's a bit of a rejigging here that you're doing for your, uh, for your financial goals, but what's nice about the cards is that you do land on um, like a new picture or a solution to these uh, challenges that we're seeing here. So that is actually a good aspect, but it's like you have to wrestle with things a little bit, like you have to shake the cage, you have to shake things up a little bit. The um, road and rider is about your goals. So again, this can be quite an important week for you, Taurus, where you're rethinking certain aspects of your direction. And like we said, uh, the clouds and whip is quite, um, quite a shake up here you need to change things around and you also need more clarity and so you're ready to grab the bull by the horns and with the ring and fish like we said you do land in a positive situation where there's like a sense of routine and commitment so you shake things up and you re-land on a proper routine we also have the diagonals that are pretty telling we have the road and whip and the whip and ring so this is where we see a clear break off as opposed to an adjustment. It's a bit 
it's a bit sharper than an adjustment. Um, the rider, clouds, and fish is more about rethinking that direction. Now, I, I do think it's still possible, Taurus, that perhaps you have to deal with some financial commitments or you could be a little bit overstretched financially right now and you need to uh, solve that. But I do think that the solutions are at hand, but you need to be a bit more aggressive with this. And like I suggested, the relationship aspect, well, it, you know, it's possibly uh, in, in focus for some of you. I can't really dismiss the possibility, although I don't think it's the most likely scenario. But supposing we are looking at relationships here, uh, there can be a quarrel or a conflict that comes up. But what's interesting is that because the ring and fish are at the end, it doesn't look like the relationship ends. In fact, it continues, but there is a bit of a, a bump here, something that comes up that causes a bit of a conflict or a challenge. And it needs to be worked out, but it sounds like it is worked out. I can also add, Taurus, that the fish and whip, they bring up the sexual element of a relationship. So there can be uh, a focus on this for you or there can be some issues around that. And I say that because of the clouds. You know, there can be a bit of tension here, uh, but that I think is, is worked out again. So Taurus, there are a few scenarios possible here. If they're not mutually exclusive for you, they can all apply, but you let me know which one you feel played out mostly or plays out mostly for you. Again, it's like you have to shake something up in order to land again on a, on a better routine. Looks like money, work, career, income, investments are in focus for you. And again, it sounds like you need to make some adjustments here. So do apply a bit more energy. Um, I would also say speed up a little bit because of the rider and whip. You don't want to waste time solving these problems, stores. So grab the bull by the horns and you'll find that you can pretty much quickly, uh, you know, land in a, in a better, in a better situation that, that is more sustainable. I think that is a, that is a, a good, good word with the ring and fish. So very best of luck with this first week, Taurus. I'm looking forward to your feedback about it. Leave me your thoughts and comments. As always, I look forward to reading them and thank you for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Aries, welcome to your weekly reading. We are in the first week of January, 2023. Although uh, last week we touched a little bit on January, but this week is more focused on uh, the month. And uh, it seems uh, Aries that most of us are in a bit of a transition. It's like we're not really done with the vacation mode. There's also Mercury retrograde in the picture. So I'm seeing like an overall calmer kind of energy where things are still in transition. But there's been a few signs with, uh, with some sharp messages. And so we're gonna find out, Aries, uh, what it's like for you. I've got my own deck here and we're doing a three by two. Okay, Aries, look at these bright cards. I sure hope that a relationship is in focus for you because these are lovely cards for a relationship. Uh, they're very telling. Uh, it's one of those, you know, typical lunar mall layouts that just speaks for itself. We have the man and woman on either side of the heart. So obviously this brings up a lovely connection. And we have the beautiful star, which is about wish fulfillment. Uh, the tree and road are peaceful cards. And so we are seeing that there is a like a natural unfolding to the relationship. And it is leading to what you want. So this is... A lovely set of cards. The tree and woman is a peaceful connection. The man and star is another beautiful connection. There is a slower energy to the cards like with the tree and road. It, it suggests that you know things are unfolding naturally and there's no need to try to make things happen because they're sort of just happening. Uh, that's what we're seeing also with the tree and road at the top except with the star it's like achieving a goal that you want there's uh, a very strong message of healing and wish fulfillment here so again we have a confirmation that things are moving forward in the way uh, that you're hoping they are so again there's no need to try to manipulate anything or push anything forward it's just happening and like we said the bottom row very obviously speaks for itself. There's a lovely connection here. 
The tree and man is a bit like the tree and woman. There's like an unfolding connection. Uh, the road and heart, again, it's like the path that is leading to what you want, the heart's desire, if you like. And the star and woman is like the star and man. Uh, there's a beautiful connection here. And you know, the parallels between the cards because the man and woman are very similar. And they represent people and they're kind of neutral. They just get, you know, their meaning from surrounding cards. So we're seeing all of these symmetries between the cards. So a lovely, uh, a lovely set of cards here. The tree, heart, and star is pretty beautiful. Uh, there is uh, the sense of happiness and wish fulfillment. And I think uh, things are getting closer and warmer. And then we have the man, road, and woman. Now I have to say, Aries, that often when we see the road in a relationship aspect, it tends to point to a parting, a separation, but it can go the other way uh, as well. It can point to a bringing together and continuing forward. And obviously that's going to be the most likely meaning because all of these beautiful cards and combinations, you know, they're so clear about being focused on a very positive relationship that is unfolding here. Now, I do think, Aries, that this is a personal relationship. It's a love relationship. And so, in this sense, if you're already with someone, things are going deeper and unfolding beautifully. It's certainly a good week to spend uh, time with your loved one here, with your special person. Um, you could meet someone if you're single, and it can also apply in another context of your life. So, very good relationships with family with people at work, potentially customers. You know, I do think, like I said, it feels more intimate and more personal, but it can apply in other contexts of your life. And again, it is a very positive relationship that unfolds beautifully, and that is leading to what you are hoping to see uh, manifest. So lovely set of cards. Make it a point, Aries, to focus on this person. Um, you know, give them space and be open. Uh, you know, really shine some positive energies on this because it is such a, a gentle uh, kind of energy that we're seeing here. So let me know what you make of these ideas, Aries. Uh, let me know who that person is. I, I'd be curious to know if you're willing to share. Very best of luck with the week. And until next time, as always, thank you for watching and take very good care of yourself.